Welcome to Baru's 135th anniversary celebration. In 2021, the great Indo-Java tsunami destroyed Jakarta. The Indonesian Disaster Mitigation Agency sent a STEM SWAT team to focus on developing a resilient city with a sustainable power grid. They considered the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats to the city. The team consisted of engineers, city planners, and architects. Thanks to their team efforts, Baru Jakarta, or New Jakarta, now known just as Baru, was completely revitalized. One of the great minds that oversaw this initial reconstruction was Technic Sapil. At 95, he opted to be cryogenically frozen and awoken in the future. Technic, welcome to future Baru! Wow, what a nap. Is this future Baru? Yes, nice to meet you, Technic. I'm Brew's mayor, Molly. And I'm Megan, Brew's director of engineering. What's this? This is a scale model of downtown Brew made of recycled materials. The city is color-coded by zone, and the scale is 1 inch equals 50 feet. So this 10-inch building represents a 500-foot, 40-story building. Tell me all about the city. Brew has about 8 million citizens boasting a diverse culture. With an average year-round temperature of about 29 degrees Celsius, this subtropical climate makes it ideal to export products like palm oil, sugar, coconuts, and coffee. Baru also exports high-tech goods such as Tenfold Technologies Eras, wireless laser transmission systems, and GATS. Whoa, so much new terminology. What is Tenfold Technology? Tenfold Technology manufactures compact structures such as expandable residential apartments, or ERAs, which are built off-site and commissioned in a location in need of quick housing. Most buildings were demolished in the tsunami. Do ERAs help solve this? Yes, the ERAs combat the tsunami's destructive forces using retractable walls on the first two floors, which are common areas. Residents and businesses occupy upper levels. Structural engineers use cross-bracing in the frame to ensure stability. In addition, all the buildings in the tsunami zone either have oblique angles or a round to create a lower impact surface. Ah, uh, yes, I see. I also remember the tsunami was particularly destructive because of inefficient mass transit during evacuations. Indeed, we offer many public transit options, the first being the gyroscopic active transports, or GATs. These large amphibious kite-shaped transports balance on two support limbs and use gyroscopic motion to maintain stability. They use AI technology to communicate and can transport 300 people during evacuations. In addition, we also have a hyperloop and a high-efficiency gondola system. After the 2021 devastating tsunami, the health and safety of Jakartans plummeted. How do you ensure the health and safety of your citizens in a disaster? Our instrumentation engineers designed the Indonesian Disaster Alert System, or IDAs, which includes remote seismic sensors located on the floor of the Java Sea and on all active volcanoes surrounding Baru. When the sensors detect seismic activity or an increase in wave height, they send a signal to an IDAs control satellite. The IDA satellite automatically transmits emergency warning signals to first responders and hospitals. The public address systems notify people to avoid retracting walls and evacuate using GATS and gondolas. In addition, Brew's coastline also has retractable tiered seawalls. The seawalls are made with concrete and steel to reduce the tidal wave's impact on the shoreline. The IDA satellite automatically activates the seawall hoisting system as it rises. It sounds like you had excellent engineers to help design the IDAs. How does Brew educate its future innovators? Students advance at their own pace and are introduced to real-life workplace environments from a young age. In fact, our College of Innovation and Design came up with the revolutionary idea of wireless laser energy transmission. Cool! Historically, tsunamis greatly damaged the power grid. Active substations got fire and power plants and transmission lines would fail. The outages hurt our healthcare services, communication channels, and transportation systems. Some long-term outages led to failed businesses and manufacturing disruptions that devastated the economy. How does Brew solve these problems? Electrical engineers replaced the fossil fuel-dependent power grid with clean, renewable sources and a smart microgrid control system. The smart grid uses sensors to identify peak demand and redistributes power as needed. We built geothermal plants since we owe 40% of the world's geothermal energy literally beneath our feet. In addition, Brew has plentiful water supplies, so we built hydropower plants in the surrounding hills. Both of these are highly reliable energy sources. Wow, fantastic. After the initial reconstruction efforts that you were involved in, Baru's engineers continued the engineering design process. The wireless laser energy transport was a result of an effort to minimize damage to the grid. 
They designed, tested, and redesigned an innovative laser transmission system until it was effective and dependable. Incredible. How does it work? At the geothermal and hydropower plants, the engineers installed voltaic photoconverters, which change electrical energy into light. The light is then amplified into a high-intensity laser and transmitted to receivers on building tops, thus eliminating transmission lines. The local building top substations convert the laser energy back into electricity by illuminating the photovoltaic cells. Our engineers have designed converters that are 88% efficient and 98% dependable. We back up grids for vital services such as hospitals, police, and fire stations with an underground grid in case of laser failure. Is your grid connected to the disaster alert system? Yes. During tsunamis, our IDA satellite also sends shutdown signals to electrical substations, turbines, and generators. This allows for a quick restart to power systems once things are stabilized. In addition, we automatically reroute power from other sources to prevent interruption of service. That is truly innovative. Thank you. Our SWAT team had to assess the various risks with this new technology, such as the efficiently voltaic photoconverters, the cost of the IDA satellite, and the challenge of building the seawalls. Both the IDA satellite system and seawalls were costly, but saved lives, so their benefits far outweigh their expense. Now, if your power generation is down long term, do you have backup storage? Oh yes, we have both water reservoirs for hydropower storage and a superconducting magnetic energy storage or SMES system. SMES stores energy contained in the magnetic field in a supercooled coil and is released on demand by smart grid sensors. Any more questions about life today? My mind is reeling from all this new technology, but I have just one. Are flossing and dabbing still cool? Oh, please. They, they were, were never cool. I think I'm going to like living in Brew of 2168. Um, okay. So my first question is, what vulnerabilities to today's power grids did you address with your futuristic design? Some of the major impacts that a, a natural disaster like a tsunami can have on the power grid is active substations catching fire and power plants and transmission lines failing. That could hurt our healthcare services, communication channels, and transportation systems. And those are very vital for the evacuation of our citizens. And the way we address this is with our wireless laser energy transmission, or wet lasers. So we... Um, Instead of having a regular power grid that can get knocked out by tsunamis, we have our wireless lasers. So beside the, the, the power grid system that's obviously you've, you've uh, addressed, what other aspects of your city is resilient? So to begin with, our housing or our eras, expandable residential apartments are very resilient to disasters. Because they are expandable and manufactured by the company Tenfold Technology, the bottom two floors can contract in the case of a tsunami. And they're all, they also have cross bracing in the frame, so this helps them withstand extreme force. And then also our transport, because we have mainly public transport besides biking and walking, and they're so efficient, they can evacuate lots of people as for example, our gondolas are constantly moving, so there's no traffic. And then our gats have the extendable limbs. So they can pass through each other, and so there's no traffic on the way for evacuations. Additionally, if a tsunami is to come in and people are left in the buildings, the gyroscopic active transports, or gats, can still go back because of their amphibious nature. They can also act as a boat. This is a major urban um, demonstration. Uh, at 8 million people. Describe uh, the whole infrastructure around living and uh, transportation. So because we do have the expandable residential apartments, these are very cost efficient, so we're able to mass produce for our large populations. And because they are expandable, they can continue expanding to their maximum extent to fit more citizens in each building. And another mode of, trans uh, of infrastructure is our transport, which is very futuristic because it can hold more people and they have more aspects such as amphibious and they, yeah.
And then our, trans, our transport systems are also very integrated. So because we have a larger population, we needed to make sure that everybody was able to get to every destination. So our Hyperloop connects the downtown district and it also connects Baru to different cities on the island of Java. And then our gondolas connect through general areas and our gyroscopic active transports can stop by each building near their tracks on the road. Can you tell us about your pollution prevention uh, program or practices? Could you please repeat the question? <laughs> Can you uh, explain what your city's pollution prevention practices are? Okay, so we actually have smoke absorbing concrete and this is a chemical reaction using, we have titanium dioxide mixed into our concrete and it uses only sunlight, mononitrogen oxide, so smoke, and titanium dioxide. And it actually turns the mononitrogen oxides into calcium nitrate and water, so much less harmful substances. Megan, as director of engineering, you used the term AI technology more than once in the presentation. Can you expand on what AI is and how you use it in your model? So that's artificial intelligence, and then it just can have sensors, and so if there's a low, say we have sensors in this building and sensors for our wireless laser transport, if the power is getting low in this building, then it can send a signal to our laser, and our laser can send more power to supplement and help keep the power running. And we also use this artificial intelligence, as we said, for our gyroscopic active transports. Because they communicate with the AI in their programming, they're able to see the sensors of where each other gyroscopic active transport is throughout the city so that they can avoid traffic and take the fastest route possible. Um, what sort of factors did you take into account um, when laying out the zones in your city? Uh, we tried to take into account commute times, like in SimCity, we linked that into our model.